Welcome to Detailing Fundamentals Part 1. In this session, we're going to have a look at the automatic detailing of power pro structures. Now before we kick off, there's a few things that I'd like to review from our earlier videos. We have around about 22, I believe, videos for the modeling fundamentals, and it's really important that we follow the steps and the procedures because the more we follow the steps and procedures the better quality of job that we're going to get out the other side because remember right at the start if you put rubbish in you're just going to get rubbish back out so it's really important that we follow the correct modeling procedure we use connections wherever possible if we have to use manual connections then we assign the connection like the cleats the connection objects with a description so that when we detail them ProSteel knows what to do with them. We do our checks, you know, our collision checks. I quite often do a 10% check on uh, my objects and my bolts and my connections and so forth just to make sure that everything there is okay. From there uh, we do our grouping to make sure that everything's okay there. Our classes and make sure that we use a correct positioning uh, sequence. From there we're ready to get into the automatic detailing and everything becomes quite easy after that. Now if you recall going back to our classing we used our display classes to break our project apart at a single part level. We're actually going to do that with our detailing right now. So we're going to go to the display classes and we're going to kick off by turning everything off. So select the first and the last and turn off. Okay, and then we're going to work from the top, toggling on and work our way down. So I, I toggle on, but you can also use the switch here. So um, if you had hold down bolts, we'd turn that on, detail them. Uh, we don't detail bolts. We do detail fittings, so I'm going to toggle that on and your fittings will come up. We'll get our display classes out of the way and we'll start getting ready for detailing. So we're going to kick off by starting with the drawing information table. The drawing information table populates our title block. So we need all the information about the um, client and the address and so forth in here. So the first time you open this up it will be empty. All right. Um, and if we go down to templates here you'll see that I've got two defined templates here. One is the format sample, which I'm just going to have a look at now and I'll explain this to you. You can see here that the project name etc etc is all here, but anything with this express on it, do not put anything in there because that's me indicating to you that um, ProSteel is actually going to put in its own information in there, but you can use all these other ones here. All right, job number, client name etc. Now that's the format sample, but we want to use the working sample. Okay, and you can also come down to favorites and add it through there, which is a really quick way of adding the template. And you can see here that I've populated it just as an example for you of how to fill this out. Okay, so um, it's all pretty easy, and you can see all the blank ones in there. Remember, don't add anything to the blank one because ProSteel is going to do that. All right, so I'm just going to leave that be for now. Um, so we'll tick OK, get out of that. Now we'll go to the 2D Detail Center. Now there's a couple of different ways I can get in here. I can go Standard, which is the full Detail Center, or um, down the bottom is Express as well. So um, just I use number one for now, just to keep it nice and simple. And you can see that I can have Standard or Express here too. I choose Standard. So this is your 2D Detail Center. And you can see that although I have four tabs across the top, really we just want to stick to the parts tab here. Now it's really important that you realize that if I ever make any changes here in the model, that does not automatically refresh the browser here. This is your, this is your item browser, your part browser. That will not automatically update if I make a change to the model. So, you know, if I were to hide some cleats here, for example, then there is no changes whatsoever done in here. All right, this is really important. A lot of people get caught like this. This refresh button is very important. Okay, that you refresh your browser with what is on the model. If you make a change in the model 
hit the refresh button, you can't hit it too many times, and um, bring all your objects back. Okay, so those are just one key thing that, that's very, very important. Okay, so that's, I've refreshed it, it's all up to date. Alright, so let's get into the detailing side of things now. The button for Express is the one next to the refresh button here. If we hit that, the Detail Center Express will come up. Now I don't want you to muck around with anything in here, just come straight to the templates. Okay, once we hit the template button, so you can see we've got uh, fittings there, and within our templates here, you can see that we have groups as well as single part fittings. So we've got members there as well. We'll do the fittings first, so just double click on that and hit the execute button. Now the first time you use it, it will come up here. This is fine. This is just telling you that you can't undo while it's working, or actually after it's working either, because it's going to produce drawings. Uh, pretty much common sense. So just tick here, OK, don't display this again. Or don't show it again, tick OK, and this is what it's going to do. This is a little message, this is what I'm going to do for you, hit OK. Alright, and then it will, so what it's going to do is it's going to uh, match up the cleats uh, with the title blocks, um, it will populate the attributes of the title block, put a material list on, and center the cleat in the middle. Um, done as a part per page. Now um, I do get asked can it do it multiple parts on one page? Yes it can but with these settings out of the box uh, it won't. All right, it's, it's additional settings are required. So once it's done close down Express, turn your fittings back off in display classes, turn your members on in display classes. Don't forget we need to refresh the 2D Detail Center, refresh, to fix up the browser, back to the Express button, go to your template, and run the next slot. Okay, this is what it's going to do, okay, and away it'll go again. Super easy, super simple, you just work your way from top to bottom, depending on what it is that you want to detail. Okay, if you want to detail grating, if you want to detail purlins and girts, which we'll do in a minute, and stuff like that. Alright, I'll just chop a little bit of this out, because we don't really need to watch this happen. Okay, that. Close down our 2D Detail Center, and back to Display Classes. If you're running two screens, leave your Display Classes sort of dialogue over on the other screen, if you like. So um, Perlins and Gertz, I'm going to present them both the same way, and we'll go detail those guys. I don't have a style in Express for Perlins and Gertz, so what I'm going to do is um, I'll probably just run those to members. Once those guys are finished, this is going to pretty much wrap up our single parts on this particular project. For, for now, I won't worry about grading and so forth. Um, I'm going to push through and I'm going to do my groups. Now if display classes were for single parts then um, our area class is for our groups, our, our weldments. So we're going to turn the whole lot off just like we did before and we're going to start at the top and work our way down. So beams, uh, t turn beams on, refresh, go back to express, and beams are horizontal, so think anything horizontal, I could run to that beam style and run it. So it's exactly the same procedure for the weldments. So I'm not going to sit there and do columns and rafters and all the rest of it. You get the idea here. But um, the procedure is very, very um, simple, very easy. Just start at the top, work your way down so you don't forget anything. Um, very easy to learn. Okay, you'll notice that the groups go through slower than single parts. That's because uh, there are weldment, there is more views, there is more um, objects within those views. So everything just takes that little tiny little bit longer. That that's to be expected. There's nothing unusual there. So once we've been through everything, uh, in this case we'll close down the 2D Detail Center. We're we're done with the detailing. Let's have a look at editing and you know the. Uh, the next step, tidying up our drawings. So, 
the first time that you will open the software you're going to have to navigate your way onto your C drive to go and find where um, ProStructures put the detail folders so I'm just going to give you the so they'll go in the detail folder here so that is um, your path that it's going to go to um, out of the box and you can see that the, the drawings uh, are down there underneath um, I'll just I, I, I like the detail view okay so they're my, they're my drawings 1700 um, once we've been in here once it's actually much easier to navigate your way back into here we come up to here and go directory history and this path will actually be in this list here okay so it actually gets very easy I'll show you that a little bit later so we'll open up one of these drawings so this is one of the beams that we did and we'll have a look at what we've got to do to edit this I mean out of the box it's not too bad I mean it's not going to look like a hand detailed drawing but by the same token everything's sort of here that, that needs to be here so let's talk about what we've got to do if you want to edit the um, inform, um, the information table stuff just double click on a piece of text and you can see that it allows you to edit the tags within here editing of the dimensions and so forth are slightly differently in so much as they come in as a drawing block to edit that drawing block or, or drawing group um, we need to untick the selectable um, tag here on the named groups and that will allow us then to edit the the object within name groups if your name groups isn't turned on you'll find it under utilities named groups that will bring a, a little dialogue up and you can just dock it down the bottom there so it's it's out of the way all right once um, this is editable you can just drag these little uh, flags around you can move them around as you require um, all of this so sort of thing is very very simple and easy to do um, and it's pretty standard for all sort of pro steel versions you know we've always done this from, since the beginning of time um, dimensions are just microstation dimensions as long as they are not over a shortening one of those red shortenings okay this is just standard microstation dimensioning um, and while I think of it um, PS standard is the style that we want to use although you do have PS standard with the detail style 1 is to 10 there that is created automatically when a detail block is created so both of these are actually 1 is to 10 so I don't mind which one you use as long as it is one of those two all right okay so you can just put dimensions on no problem at all they will mimic or clone the other dimensions um, whole dimension text can just drag okay um, and these guys have a little grip um, actually while I think of it they if you want to move that arrowhead it has a little node on the end of the arrowhead or a little handle on the arrowhead as well so editing of it is um, nice and simple and while we're talking editing let's have a look at some of these dimensions okay because they work a little bit different let's say you want to move one of these dimensions around let's start with um, the leader lines or the lines that they will just drag around if you grab the bottom node okay um, but uh, so they're pretty easy to to manipulate but if you wanted to actually move the number the number is connected to those lines and there's a, a methodology the methodology is come up to modify element number seven and then number one okay modify element select uh, the uh, dimension text and, and just drag it wherever you want if you drag it out here it will put a line on it if you drag it over here it'll shorten it up all very simple but it's just there's a methodology that you've got to kind of follow okay while I think of it these other dimensions that I put down the bottom here I put them in one string so they will be a dimension uh, uh, object together so if you wanted to get rid of one of those 70s or move one of those 70s or something like that um, we might need to come up here and drop element which is number six number one in here the options are dimension and I want to drop the dimension back to its segments okay so click on it once that's now dropped so 
um, you can see here now, just push that out of the way so we can grab this, you can see they're now individual dimensions, okay? So very, very simple, but a couple little tips there that you'll want to kind of keep your eye on as you're working on this stuff. Now let's say we've got a whole heap of drawings that we want to check, which we do. The way to navigate that is come up to File, go to Project Explorer. Now this hasn't been used before, so it'll be tiny. So I'm just going to expand this out. Now the key is I want the Active Directory. Okay, right here, the Active Directory. Okay, that is the directory that this particular drawing is sitting in. Okay, so Active Directory, and I'm going to expand out Designs. Within here, you can see all of our drawings that have been created, as well as down the bottom here, these are the drawing blocks for the drawing updating. So you don't want to open these, you don't want to touch them, you don't want to move them, because that will affect our drawing updating. Okay, so we come back up here and we will open one of these drawings, and that gives us the ability to stop, and check it and make sure it's okay. We could edit it. If it was okay, we go to the next one and then double click on the next one. And you just real quickly just make sure they're all right. So these are just Perlin drawings. They look fine. So um, generally with single part drawings, single part drawings should barely need any touching at all. Okay. But don't forget, if you do want to edit them, come down to named groups. Okay, and I just scamper through here. It should only take you a second or two just to quickly peruse each one and go, yep, can they build it? Yes, they can. Can they build that one? Yes, they can. Can they build the next one? Yes, they can. So that is, in effect, my checking process. Now, the final thing is, don't forget your arrows down here. These are all the drawings I've had open, and you can see my example one, which is my main model, is down the bottom. Pro, Power Pro Steel doesn't open mul multiple drawings at once like AutoCAD does. You you just don't need to. Okay, it, it it scampers through the drawings very very quickly without the need to come and have 20 drawings open. Now the last thing I just want to show you is I'm going open, and if I come up here to my history, you can see the detail folder is in there now. I just wanted to show you that, so we're straight into the drawing files that were created. So don't forget to go to that drawing history whenever you want to open something.